of forces in history that have brought us to where we are today. One is that people in this country talk about the American dream, and it is a very powerful dream. The dream is to improve your society in large measure because you want to pass on to your children and your grandchildren a better, a better world. You want to improve your living standards and make sure that you improve their living standards. And we've been very successful at doing that as a country. Whether we're going to continue to be successful is still in doubt. It depends on the educational system. It depends on how well we found, fund um, medical institutions, medical research, insurance, health insurance. It depends on how well we look after the elderly in our society. It depends on how well we train minorities and, and, and um, immigrant communities. Do we give them the same chances that we had? Those, I think, are, are, are very important uh, parts of, of, continuing, of continuing this process. They're the kinds of things I think are, are, are important as, as, as we look ahead. The other changes, the civil rights movement, I think was extremely important. I, I think we now sort of look back on it and say, well, it was inevitable. It wasn't inevitable at the time. It was very controversial at the time. I was fortunate because I'd been in Africa the summer just before the rally that Dr. Martin Luther King had in Washington at the Lincoln Memorial. And, got off the plane coming back from Africa where I'd spent the summer with a group called Operation Crossroads and we got on a bus and went down to Washington. So I, I felt that firsthand in a way. And I think also the movement in many emerging economies uh, has been remarkable, almost breathtaking when you think, for instance, the, 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 uh, the Green Revolution. And I'm talking about the environmental revolution. This is even before that. This was an attempt to develop better uh, qualities of seeds that were drought resistant, better rice uh, that was able to withstand disease. These changes in, in the 1950s and 1960s avoided massive starvation in a number of emerging economies. So science has come up with a number of very powerful driving forces to improve living standards. The polio vaccine, for instance. Remarkable, polio was a scourge in the 1950s. Now it's been almost eliminated in the United States and many other parts of the world. Cures for these horrible diseases have been, in, in some cases, produced by American medicine or medicine abroad. Pasteurization, Louis Pasteur. People died regularly of drinking bad milk. He was able to pasteurize it and enable people, children to drink milk and, and, and thrive. So there, there have been a whole range of very, very innovative changes in medicine that, and, and, in, and in the way we produce food that have led to enormous benefits. And the, 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 the ability of, of mankind to come up with new innovative ideas, I think, is, uh, is a very powerful force. And if, if you have the right education, you have the um, sufficient sums put into research and development, if you give people a chance, an opportunity, that is uh, that that will enable our 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 society and all other societies to 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 thrive in the future. Again, not everyone will, but in general, there's a wonderful story by the French writer Saint Exupéry, who wrote the book The Petit Prince, The Little Prince. But he wrote another book called Terre des Hommes, and he witnessed in a railway station this family of uh, refugees in World War II. And he saw this little boy, and the little boy, he said, that little boy will never get an education. He'll never get good health care. He's gonna be poor his whole life. That little boy could have been a Mozart, but instead he's an assassinated Mozart, which meant that, that he would never get a chance to do what he could do. And I think it's a very powerful story because how many people are there around who could cure AIDS, who could cure cancer, who could cure many other diseases, who will never get a chance to even go to school to develop their potential unless we're able to have a society which ensures that they have proper health care, ensures that they have good education, and ensures that they have an opportunity to, to be the best they can be. If we don't do that, it's those kids who suffer, but it's also our society that suffers. Mm -hmm.